You've probably heard the terms nuclear fusion and nuclear fission tossed around. Whether in the context of clean energy, doomsday weapons, or futuristic power sources. They sound similar, almost interchangeable. But in reality, they're two completely different processes with very different outcomes. One powers our current nuclear reactors, the other powers the sun. Understanding the difference between the two isn't just a science trivia thing. It's a key to unlocking the future of energy. So let's break it down. What exactly are fusion and fission? How do they work? And why is one considered the holy grail of clean energy, while the other still makes people uneasy? Let's dive in, right here, on History of Simple Things. Let's start with fission because it's the one humanity has already harnessed on a large scale. At its core, no pun intended, nuclear fission is the process of splitting a heavy atom into smaller parts. The most commonly used fuel for fission is uranium-235 or plutonium-239. These are heavy, unstable atoms. When you bombard them with a neutron, the nucleus becomes so unstable that it splits apart. This split releases a massive amount of energy, more neutrons, and smaller atoms called fission products. Those neutrons can go on to split more atoms, creating a chain reaction. If controlled carefully, this chain reaction can produce steady heat. That heat can then boil water, spin turbines, and generate electricity. That's how nuclear power plants work today. But if it's uncontrolled, like in an atomic bomb, it releases all that energy almost instantly, causing a massive explosion. Now, let's talk about fusion, the real holy grail of energy. Nuclear fusion is the opposite of fission. Instead of splitting heavy atoms, fusion combines light atoms, usually forms of hydrogen, into a heavier atom like helium. But here's the wild part. This is what powers the sun and all the stars in the universe. At extremely high temperatures and pressures, hydrogen nuclei smash together with such force that they fuse into helium, releasing huge amounts of energy in the process. The energy released by fusion is even greater than fission, and it comes with fewer risks, no radioactive waste, no meltdown danger, and no long-term contamination. So why aren't we using fusion everywhere already? Well, that's the challenge. Fusion requires insane temperatures, we're talking over 100 million degrees Celsius, to overcome the natural repulsion between positively charged protons. Containing that kind of heat on Earth is incredibly difficult. Scientists have been trying to do it for decades, and while there have been huge advances, we're not quite there yet. Okay, so now that we've covered the basics, Let's explore the key differences between fusion and fission. First, they're fundamentally opposite processes. Fission works by splitting heavy atoms like uranium or plutonium, while fusion involves combining light atoms, typically forms of hydrogen, to form heavier ones like helium. Their byproducts are also very different. Fission creates radioactive waste that can remain hazardous for thousands of years, requiring secure long-term storage. Fusion, in contrast, produces mostly harmless helium and generates far less radiation overall. When it comes to energy output, fusion has the upper hand. It has the potential to release significantly more energy than fission. In fact, just a small amount of fusion fuel, about a gram, can yield as much energy as tons of coal. Safety is another big distinction. Fission reactors carry the risk of meltdowns or catastrophic failures, as seen in disasters like Chernobyl and Fukushima. Fusion doesn't work the same way. It doesn't rely on a chain reaction. So if something goes wrong, the reaction naturally stops. There's no meltdown scenario. Lastly, there's the question of technological readiness. 
Fission is mature technology. We've been using it since the 1940s to generate electricity. Fusion, however, is still in the experimental phase. Projects like ITER in France and NIF in the United States are making major strides, but we don't yet have commercial fusion power plants up and running. So while both processes involve atomic nuclei and release huge amounts of energy, the way they operate and their implications are worlds apart. So at this point, you might be thinking, wait, fusion sounds way better than fission. Why are we still using fission? That's a great question. And the answer is practicality. Fusion might be better on paper, but it's incredibly hard to achieve on Earth. We need to replicate what happens inside stars, but in a power plant. That means creating and maintaining conditions hotter than the sun and holding that plasma in place using magnets, lasers, or other containment systems. It's like trying to bottle a piece of a star without letting it touch anything. Fission, while less elegant and messier, is much easier to do. We've built the infrastructure, we have the experience, and we can get predictable power output. That's why it's still used today for about 10% of the world's electricity. If fusion becomes practical, it could change the world. We'd have a virtually unlimited source of clean energy with no greenhouse gases, minimal waste, and no fuel shortages. It could power cities, desalinate water, fuel industries, and even help reverse climate change by replacing fossil fuels. But until then, we'll likely see a combination of fission, renewables like solar and wind, and possibly small modular reactors, SMRs, making up our energy future. So, to wrap it all up, nuclear fission is about splitting atoms. It's what we use today. It's powerful, but it comes with radioactive waste and safety risks. Nuclear fusion is about joining atoms. It's the power of the stars. Clean, safe, and abundant, but not yet ready for commercial use. Both represent incredible feats of human understanding and engineering, and both could play a role in the future if we handle them wisely. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.